Welcome to our school, the Mountbatten School in Romsey, Hampshire. Like all schools, it's a place of learning, a place of finding out. But unlike all schools, we're very near the coast and some of the busiest sea lanes in Britain. When we got to talking about that, we realised there was a whole lot we didn't know about the people who go to sea for us. What do you know about the sea and seafaring? Um, I know that there was a ship called the Titanic that sailed from Southampton on its ill-fated maiden voyage sort of thing, um, and it, it didn't make it to New York because it crashed into an iceberg. I know there's a lot of crates that are shipped around the country for them, like obviously for cars and things like that, but yeah, that's about it really. Can I know about like that, like years ago, that a lot of trade went through on like through the sea and like people used to trade stuff. Britain and Ireland were influenced a lot by the sea and seafarers, I guess, bring us fish and chips. When you go across the, along the dual carriageway, you see, um, you see the, the massive dock and like, all the cranes and things, so I think that has something to do with it. I know Southampton relies on cruise ships heavily for uh, its economy, and um, that we rely as a country on the sea a lot for import and export, but that's really all of So, what do the sea? And seafarers do for us then. Looks like we have some finding out to do. We already knew quite a bit about the Royal Navy because one of Britain's most famous naval officers, Lord Louis Mountbatten, was a patron of our school. Without the Navy's protection, seafarers and sea trade would really be in trouble. And no one who likes fish and chips can forget the huge debt we owe to Britain's fishermen, working one of the most dangerous professions in the world to bring us the fish we need. But we wanted to find out more about the seafarers who cross the world's oceans to bring us 95% of everything we use. So we hit the internet. But then we decided to go better than virtual. We wanted real. We wanted to be where we could see how the sea trade and seafarers work. What better way to find that out than to research and make our own film? And where do sea trade and seafarers all come home? A port! It took a bit of time and a few calls, but in the end we got lucky, and local. Associated British Ports at Southampton said they'd help us with our film. Oh wow, OK, thank you. Time to load up and move out. Next up, an on-site briefing with ABP, Associated British Ports. Major ports are enormous for the country. I mean, we're an island nation, so we rely on our ports for pretty much everything that we have. Most of the things that we all take for granted on a day-to-day -day basis. The reason the lights come on when you switch them on is largely down to the ports that bring in all the coal cargoes and the biomass cargoes that keep the power stations going. Right the way down to all the equipment that we take for granted in our houses, our telephones, our TVs, our smartphones, everything comes in and out by sea. Seafarers are quite important for all this, aren't they? You're absolutely right. Seafarers are the, un the unseen heroes, if you like, of the marine trade. These are people that spend enormous amounts of time on the high seas, away from friends and family, doing a very good job in extremely tough conditions in some cases. And, and these are the people that ultimately are responsible for keeping the country moving. ABP run ports all over the country, from Hull and Gaul on the Yorkshire coast, to Ayr in Scotland, from Cardiff in Wales, to Plymouth in Devon. And of course, one of the busiest in the UK, Southampton. We would expect over a year to see between nine and 10,000 large ships into and out of the port, but that's just the, the, the tip of the iceberg, so to speak, because we actually see probably 70 to 80,000 vessel movements within the port area, and they're vessels that are required to tell us that they're in the area. But of course, as you'll know, there are hundreds of thousands of leisure craft. Our largest vessel that currently uses this port is 395 metres long and 55 metres wide. But to put that into context, if you think of the length of a football pitch or a hockey pitch, that's about 100 metres long. So the ship, largest ships we see here are four football pitches long. Big ships and big cargoes. 
Next stop on our fact-finding tour was with Ray Facey of Solent Stevedores. His company looks after the bulk cargoes at Southampton, and there's a lot of them. Goods we handle uh, range from export grains, which is grown locally, uh, recycled metal, and we do around about half a million tonnes of that. Uh, we do um, uh, recycled wood, that, uh, for, which is uh, con uh, burnt in Scandinavia in their winter. Um, we do um, uh, recycled glass, we import soya, we import salt, uh, and there's around about a million tonnes in a good year that we see passing over the bulk terminal in Southampton. Here's some of the scrap metal Ray was talking about, being prepared for export so it can be recycled. That's good for the environment. Strange to think it might soon be coming right back to Southampton as another of the port's major imports. With cars and vehicles, we have approximately 750,000 a year to deal with. Every day is a different challenge. However, from a perspective of a port, we are ultimately limited on land space that we have next to the water. With us getting busier and busier, and the vessels becoming larger and larger, land is our, our challenge at present. Car fans sometimes talk about two-box or three-box car designs hatchbacks and cars with boots in plain English. But there's one box which has literally changed the world we live in, the container. A good example is the vessel that we've just um, seen traversing up to the container port there. That ship will be carrying all manner of goods, but particularly Southampton is very well known for its connections with the Far East trade. About 70% of what we do is to and from the Far East, and it's known as the deep sea container trade. Of course, none of this could happen without the ships to bring us what we need and the seafarers who sell them. As well as cars and cargo, Southampton also handles cruise liners. Huge ships with huge crews to make your trip, or more likely, your mum and dad's, a voyage to remember. But whatever ship you sail in, being a seafarer means doing a lot of training, which is hard work. Worth going for it as a career though? Well, these cadets from Warsash Maritime Academy have no doubts about that. Definitely go and give it a shot. It was something, until my friends had done it, I'd never really gave it a thought. And it wasn't until I heard their good stories that I realised what I was really missing out on. Um, so similar to Steph, really, I'd say ha have a go at it, because, like I said, it's not like any other job you'll ever do. And you can see the world, and you can, you can learn so much from it. And even if it's not a career that you want to stick with, you can go on to so much more from the qualifications that you do get. You get to see all these different cultures. You get to see all these different people. And the thing is, you can bring that and you always keep your friends at home and you come back and you can sit around in a bar and talk to your friends about these stories and you can sometimes see the slight jealousy in their eyes but they still love you for what you do yeah. you're doing so no one will ever have the same stories yeah. but no. you have been a seafarer training is hugely important and whether you're working up on the bridge in the engine rooms as a waiter as a um, as a cabin steward part of the training that we have to do is, is ultimately to ensure that these guys are fit and able to work at sea. And for us, the training starts when you're a cadet and, and we're lucky enough to work with Borsash to train and we have 16 cadets going through that program at the moment. And they'll be learning not only of working safely at sea, but also working safely on board a cruise ship where you're, in, you're looking after up to 1,000, 2,000, up to 6,000 people at any one time. Finding out is fun when it's as interesting as that. And now we know a lot more about how much we depend on the sea trade and about seafarers who make it all possible and keep our country going by working around the clock all around the world. Dan, what did you think of your day at the port? It was really interesting finding out so much information, the amount of trade that comes in via the sea. Yeah. But um, I was also amazed at how much training the seafarers have to do to qualify for that job. It's really amazing how much work that people put in just for trade or just for simple things in life, but actually it's a lot of work that goes into it. I, f I found the uh, trip to the port really enjoyable um, and see what the seafarers actually do day in, day out is, you know, quite in interesting to see, you know, what, what they have to go through, you know, from the containers coming in um, to the cru cruise ships coming in sort of thing. It's, it's surprising to see how 
and the people at Southampton, you know, how they control it all. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I mean, I go past the port every day and I didn't know what they did at all. And now now that I've been there, I understand that how much work goes into it. And I think the seafarers are really underappreciated. I mean, I didn't really know anything about them before before we went on the trip. But now, I mean, I understand how much work they put in to, into the port and um, for our everyday life. I think it's amazing what seafarers do because they go on voyages for a long time. And then there's like the life on board can be quite rough and like we owe a lot of debt to them because they do so much for us. Uh, the best part of the day at the port was meeting the cadets because it was really nice to get an insight into what life as a seafarer was like because they do so many things for this country like bringing in all the cars and exporting goods and they make the country a lot of money. Without them I don't think we'd be half as great. So now we know what the sea does for us.